thank you for coming. I see a lot of moss and weeds. What can I do? Moss and weeds can be very difficult to control here in the Pacific Northwest. And a lot of it is like the reasons that we like to live here. You know, the beautiful tall evergreens, moisture coming down. It also contributes to soil conditions that make lawn struggle and moss and weeds thrive. It can be shade, poor conditions in the soil like uh, compaction, poor drainage, low acidity, poor nutrition all contributes to the lawn not doing well and the moss and the weeds thriving. So if I want a healthy lawn, I need to have healthy soil? The best way to have a healthy lawn is to have healthy soils. A healthy lawn is vigorous growing, thick and tenacious, and that's our number one control for moss and weeds. And what you wanna do also is use the practices in our natural lawn care videos. Can I use those bags of moss treatment that I see at the nurseries? Full disclosure, those moss control products are not gonna solve your moss problem, okay? Those products have iron in it, which burns the moss by pulling the moisture out of it. But you're gonna to have to physically remove that moss or it will come back. It also makes the soil acidic, which makes moss thrive and makes it more difficult for lawn to be successful in those areas. So if you're gonna use moss control products on an annual or a yearly basis, then you're actually making it better for the moss to be successful and for your lawn not to be successful. Is this really okay for my family and my pets and the environment? We're finding these products in our waterways and we also feel that there could be some damage to aquatic wildlife or to regular wildlife by using these products. We're seeing staining, if you see those orange spots all over your sidewalk that's from iron stains that can happen inside your house if the products tracked into your house and then we have to be very careful with our pets paws because that iron can dehydrate the paws so we need to make sure that's being wiped off before they ever come back into the house if I use these products what do I have to keep in mind well several things number one you're gonna to want to keep your family and your pets off of the lawn until it turns black you're gonna to to be very careful not to track these products into your house, which it can cause staining. And then you'll be want to be very careful with your pet's paws. Wipe them off with a damp towel so that it doesn't dehydrate them or they don't track anything in the house. Okay, that sounds like a lot of work and kind of spendy, and it might make the problem worse and not better. And I'd kind of like to avoid and not use chemicals. What are my options? Well, depends on how much time and energy you have, okay? It doesn't matter if you use the product, the moss control products, or you don't. You're gonna have to physically remove that moss by renting a thatching machine. It's also called a lawn comb. Big machine, heavy. You're gonna need a truck to bring that home. And then you're actually gonna have to go out and run that all over the lawn in order to be able to get all that moss up. Okay. Once you do that, your lawn is going to be nothing but bare spots. So you're going to have to come back and aerate, overseed, top dress with some compost in order to cover up that seed in order to get that lawn to grow up through the summertime or the moss will come back. Sometimes that's why we recommend just tolerating the moss. Key steps to a healthy lawn and to help prevent moss and weeds. Get a soil test done to find out if your soil is a too acidic. The test should show you if you need to add lime to correct this. During the dry season, water your lawn deeply once or twice a week. Aim for an inch of water per week. Mow your lawn high, two and a half to three inches is best. Mulch mowing works great. It adds organic matter to your soil and adds nutrients to the grass. Fertilize your lawn over the growing season. Follow instructions and don't over fertilize. It will harm your lawn and your soil and our local waterways. Hand pull weeds and reduce spreading weeds by removing weed flower heads before they go to seed, especially in spring. Avoid using weed and feed products. They contain pesticides which are harmful to people, pets, and wildlife. They can also kill the worms and the good bugs in your soil that you want to keep your lawn staying healthy. This sounds really great. Now, how long is it gonna take for my lawn to get healthy? Well, changes won't happen overnight, but you'll probably see some big differences within a year. The key is to continue with the practices until you see those results. What can I do to make sure that the weeds and moss stay manageable? You want to keep up on your hand weed pulling and also on your moss control and stuff. If you're finding that moss is a persistent problem, then there's probably those underlying conditions that are going to have to be addressed in order for the lawn to be successful. Here's what you can do. Prune your trees to allow more sunlight to reach the shady spots. Grass will always have a hard time growing under evergreen trees. Replace the lawn in shady areas with shade tolerant ground covers or other plants. Aerate annually to help drainage problems and to break up compacted soil. After aerating, top dress with compost and overseed in the spring. For some people, the best solution is to replace, remove, or downsize the lawn. Embracing moss is a choice that people make. Moss is soft, can handle a lot of traffic and activity, and is low maintenance. It doesn't require mowing, watering, or feeding. It is a reasonable alternative to lawn, 
Living with moss can make your life much easier. Lad, great advice. I am really going to try and stay on top of and follow the natural yard care steps and recommendations.